you're ever planning on going to the United States of America, you have to visit the national parks that it has to offer. There are so many beautiful national parks that I had the privilege of visiting. And in this video, I'm gonna to talk to you about my five favorite ones and ones that I would definitely go back to. So I've made this list based off where I went. There are some national parks that I didn't obviously manage to get to. Um, and this is also excluding Alaska and Hawaii because I only traveled to around 30 states in the mainland of the country. Starting off with the most obvious one and the first and the eighth biggest one in the country, that is Yellowstone. One thing I didn't expect to see at Yellowstone was the amount of wildlife. Obviously they advertise it on that and the volcanoes and all that kind of stuff, but to have the experience that we had of getting so close up to the bison that we saw was honestly one of my favorite experiences from the whole trip. And I really look back on that moment a lot because of how much I enjoyed that day. Obviously every national park is different, but the one thing that kind of we were shocked by was that you kind of have to drive around it because it's so big, you don't really, like for example, in our other national parks we went to, like Arches, we were doing hikes and, and walking around, but with Yellowstone, you kind of just drive around and admire the views. One of the stories that I found quite crazy was when I was there, there was a lady who actually died that week because she went up to a bison and tried to take a selfie with it. So don't get too close to the animals especially things like bears, wolves, and bisons, because it's not a farm, they're not in, they're not in like cages, it's, it's a park, it's, it's open land, so just be careful. They do sell things like bear spray, if you have an, some sort of interaction with a bear, but I would recommend just driving around and enjoying the views and looking at the wildlife outside your window. Arches National Park in Utah was in my top three of the whole country. There's so many different hikes you can do with the appearances of different arches you can look at. For example, the first one we did, if you saw the video, is the Delicate Arch, which is probably the most famous hike. So I would recommend that because it's not too hard, but it's not too easy. It's enough of a push to challenge yourself and it is definitely worth it for the view that you're greeted by at the top. It took us around two to three hours up and down. We kind of sat up the top for a bit and just enjoyed it. But if you're willing to do it, yeah, that's how long it would say. The downside to it though is it's obviously so popular. So when we got there at 4 a.m., there was still quite a few pe more people than we expected. And if you're going, I'd recommend going at a time where it's not as busy. I don't know when that is for us, 4 a.m. was pretty quiet, but as we were coming down, it started to get really busy. We could even see like queues of cars. Next up on the list is the Grand Canyon in Arizona. This is definitely one of the very, very well-known ones, um, but again, for all the right reasons. I had so much fun exploring the Grand Canyon and the hike was very, very tough, both mentally and physically. Although it was very tough, I still recommend doing the hike, which was the Bright Angel Trail. It's a very long way down and it's even longer way up, but no matter where you are on the hike, you will just have amazing views to look at. And if you're lucky like us, you'll be greeted by a goat. Crystal Ronaldo, Zooey. That obviously scared the shit out of us when it was we were the only people on the trail and then you just hear a noise coming up the other way to be greeted by some ugly looking goat thing. No offense, but it was, yeah, it was it was a fun experience and it's those sort of moments that we look back at and laugh. I know I said it's very tough and it's really challenging, but when you look back at it, once you've done it, you'll feel like you've almost accomplished something, achieved something. It, it's, it's a great goal to say to people that you kind of almost technically climbed the Grand Canyon or hiked the Grand Canyon. One thing is not great about it is if you're doing it in summer, it gets fucking hot in Arizona, which I'm sure you're already aware of. So we did it early in the morning. So coming up, we only got a bit of heat that was quite hard to deal with. But if you're doing it in the middle of the day, make sure you've got a lot of sunscreen, hats and all that kind of jazz because it gets really bright and really, really hot. Redwoods National Park in California. Again, another famous national park in the USA. And that's because of its amazing scenery. If that's kind of your vibe of trees and greenness and red obviously then i definitely recommend the redwood national park we went to perry creek which is a nice hike you can walk through the trees and walk under the trees that have fallen also driving through the avenue of giants which was emily's favorite part because these trees are huge the biggest trees you've ever seen in your life another one of those national parks where you can sit in your car and just admire the views or you can get out and do the prairie creek hike i'm sure there's many other hikes you can do in the Redwood National Park, so I would just recommend looking online um, and also downloading the app. All trails 
which is what we used for most of our journey. Of course, I have to talk about the downsides and that is not really about redwoods, but being in California and being at a national park, it's gonna be really, really expensive. And that's down to gas, food, souvenirs, whatever you wanna spend your money on while you're there you're gonna be spending quite a bit. Before I get into my last national park, which is gonna surprise a lot of you, I just wanna take some time to ask you to subscribe. I'm on my way to a thousand subscribers, still got quite a while to go, but if you're enjoying the content that I've been posting recently, please let me know by hitting the subscribe button. And the last one is White Sand National Park. You've probably heard me talk about this a lot in my previous videos. I absolutely love this national park, especially because we came across it quite last minute. We would wanted to visit one more national park before staying in Texas for a week, that was New Mexico. We found the White Sand National Park online, it looked cool, we went for the sunset and that was the best decision we made. Although it's just a big desert, but it's the colors that reflect off it when the sun's setting, just look beautiful. You got like this blue and then a bit of pink, the sand was completely blue, it was really cool. And if you also wanna have some fun, you can go to the store they have there and you can buy one of these sleds, some wax and just ride down these huge sand dunes, which was what I enjoyed most, I'd say. This is the one national park that I always recommend to people because I always think that it's looked past. I remember posting videos of it and people thinking it was snow and it's that white. There are not any negative things I'd have to say about the White Sand National Park, apart from that we had to get stopped on the way through. They just asked us if we were citizens or where we were from and whatever, just some basic stuff that they ask, I think, something to do with the area where we were. And this was all just for security reasons, nothing against us. Um, so that's the only thing. So just be, be prepared for that. Thanks for watching this video. I hope it was useful for you before you go on your USA trip or any of these national parks. Like I mentioned before, it'd be great if you could subscribe just to let me know that you're, in, you're enjoying this content that I've been posting twice a week. Also, if you could let me know in the comments of any national parks that I obviously didn't get a chance to go to that you would recommend for me and the other people in the comments. So if you love to travel, I have loads of content like this video here, which is me giving you my five things that I always take with me and are essential to your travel and your trips. So if you go watch that, and uh, I'm sure that will benefit you too. Thanks for watching. Go watch the other videos because they're good like this one. Thank you very much.